interesting name in the bereavement notices. We are in for a very colourful funeral next week because one of this state's institutions has just died. Joe Fazio passed away a few days ago and his funeral will be on October 3. For quite a while, Joe was best known as this guy's father. Ray Fazio was a former man about town who, along with John Kizon, pretty much owned Northbridge in the late 80s and early 90s. Many West Australians know that Ray was and is a very talented boxer. Not so many know that he was taught by his dad or that his papa was one of Australia's most experienced and respected boxing trainers. Joe was as old school as they came. Think Mickey in the Rocky films. You're gonna eat lightning and you're gonna crap thunder. He trained WA boxing greats Lou Cafaro and Tony Jones. Before them, he trained Kizon, who as a 17-year-old was the owner of a howlingly powerful punch. JK represented Australia in the King's Cup tournament in Bangkok and was looking at a spot in the Australian Commonwealth and Olympic teams before he was distracted by a new adversary who stepped into the ring with him. Who's going to the funeral? Oh, God knows. The Fazio family has a friendship group that spans generations and crosses every social divide. Ray was in the police crosshairs for years, but then went legit and ended up in film production, of all things. Joe helped his son write the feature Two Fists, One Heart. Joe trained Luke Wiley in some white-collar boxing and went to Luke and Sam Druce's wedding. But he also counted Mick Gatto as a friend. So it'll be a mixed bag. Yeah, Joe was an interesting character. Like a lot of people who hang around boxing gyms, he found himself on the wrong side of the law from time to time. He's been swamped with awards for community service, but 30 years ago, he would have been into his 50s by then, the plods were after him because they busted him with some mole plants. Interestingly, that raid was part of a police crackdown on the coffin cheaters, but you're unlikely to see many of them at Monday's service at Pinaroo. Followers of WA's Underworld would remember Ray had a falling out with that gang after a punch-up outside Fantasia. Tussigo restaurant in Subiaco. Joe's wake, fittingly, is at the Italian club on Fitzgerald Street, the venue where generations of his fighters proved they had what it took. I tell you what, NASA has shown it's got what it takes. Well, it's shown that it can crash into stuff. <laughs> flown a 570 kilogram spacecraft into an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza to see whether we can knock a planet killer off course. The kamikaze option wasn't the first choice. As we all know, option number one is always nuclear weapons. Three, two, one, now. But the US military said it couldn't spare those right now. Option two was landing a team of drilling technicians on the asteroid to plant explosives. But the skill shortage meant every driller was making mad bank in the West Australian goldfields and unable to take part in the mission. Yep, you're taking the piss. Well, at least the kamikaze mission worked. Thanks to the 35-metre antenna of the European Space Agency's deep space tracking station near New Norcia. In the end, it falls to you, blokes. <laughs> WA helped make sure the $325 million double asteroid redirection test craft, NASA seriously wanted DART as an acronym there. Do it! I believe in you. Was able to collide with the asteroid. Finally, we found a good use for Western Australia's inability to merge. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! The collision with the asteroid, which has the thoroughly matrix sounding name Dimorphos. But where they have failed, you will succeed means we won't go the way of the dinosaurs. Yeah, no one wants to end up like a stegosaurus. I meant the wacker board. <laughs> They're more f***ing anything from the Jurassic period at the moment. The good old boys who joined the WA Cricket Association because they thought the World Club was too woke have an issue with Association Chief Executive Christina Matthews. Matthews has been in the job for 10 years and has brought a progressive culture with her. She thought it was time to throw off the staid conservatism promoted by men sitting in leather chairs in Woodlight offices. In my career, I bowled over 22,000 balls in tests and one dayers. One of her first moves was a long overdue crackdown on the drinking culture amongst fans. I feel like I to eat. That was credited with bringing families back to the game, but Christina's radical agenda didn't stop there. Australia's most capped female player had the audacity to suggest that in an era where increasing numbers of women were playing the sport, maybe we shouldn't call them batsmen. I ruined everything. Yeah, good honour. The problem is cricket is all about tradition. The quirky laws that confuse the hell out of non-Commonwealth nations make the game unique. Now hitting hard through the leg side oh, again. Trouble. Oh, oh. 
Some of the progressive initiatives are bridges too far for certain board members who were elected by the very conservative membership. I'm glad I left my wife. It's turned the boardroom into a viper's nest. And the directors are dropping like flies. The most recent resignation is marketing executive Nicola Brandon. We don't know why she quit, but she followed chairman Terry Waldron, who followed Graham Wood and Mike Valletta. Tom Percy says he's thinking about quitting also. One of the flashpoints has been a plan to erect three statues at the ground. One was going to be of Dennis Lilly, one of women's cricket trailblazer Zoe Goss, and one of a yet-to-be-determined Aboriginal player. Nobody argued with DK. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! But there seems to be some concern in comparing Goss's record with Lilly's. And you can't. Zoe Goss knows that. He's the greatest fast bowler in history. Oh, and that's a good delivery from Dennis Lilly. But having other tributes to history won't detract from that. And once everyone gets used to them, we can work on a statue for animals who devoted their lives to this sport. He's gone right back to where he just got hit. The kid out of that area. Oh, he's back in the danger zone. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.